Hey guys and welcome to my channel That Guy Sews. My name is Josh Barnett and in today's video I'm going to be doing an oversized drop shoulder t-shirt. I'm going to be talking you through from start to finish exactly how to make this t-shirt and if you want me to I can upload another video purely based on how I constructed the pattern. I hope you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up if you do and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Okay then guys, so for this tutorial you're going to need a rotary cutter, some weights or maybe some pins, a pin cushion with some pins in, some scissors, some fabric, a cutting board, you're going to need a pattern and also you're going to need a sewing machine and for this tutorial I've used an overlocker but you can just use purely a sewing machine if you want to. So I started off by folding the fabric in half, salvage to salvage side, and then laying the pattern face down on the fold. This way, when I cut the pattern out on the fold, it will open up to be the entire front piece or the entire back piece. I then laid the pattern down, put the weights on, and proceeded to just cut the pattern out. Now I've repeated this process for the back of the garment as well. As you can see, I have used the same pattern piece as the front and just self-drafted the back neckline. You guys can do this or you can draft your own back piece. I've done it purely just to save time uh, for the ease of the video. And this part is a completely optional part for you guys. I've decided that in my garment, I wanted to have a center back seam. So what I've done is just press the fold line so that when I open up the back, the back bodice part of the garment, I can then make a cut right down the center back so that when I stitch this together, then there will be a center back seam. As I said, it's completely up to you guys. You don't have to do this step. Now the same as I've done with the two bodice pieces, I'm going to do the same with the sleeves. What I've done is I folded the fabric over, salvage to salvage end, and I've just laid the pattern piece down on top so that when I cut this out, there will be two sleeve pieces underneath. Now, as you can see, what I've done from there is use the rest of the folded over fabric to start and create a neck band. So I've started off with the ruler and just made a nice clean cut line across the fabric. Then I've measured from that mark two inches down and made another cut line so that I will have a two inch neck band, which obviously will be one inch when it's folded over. Okay then, so now that the cutting out is done, let's move on to the construction. I've pinned the garment right down that centre seam and then taken it over to my overlocker where I've proceeded to overlock right down from the top of the neckline down to the bottom of the garment. Now in this tutorial, I've decided to use an overlocker. If you guys don't have an overlocker, then it's absolutely fine. You can just use a zigzag stitch or an overlocking stitch on your standard machine. The reason that I've used an overlocker is just because I really love the professional feel and I want to make sure the garment is really, really clean and looks like it's shop bought. Now that that seam is complete, you're going to lay your front onto your back, both right sides together. You need to then put pins to mark where the bottom of your armholes are and then you need to sew from that pin down to the bottom of the garment. Repeat this on both side seams and then just sew across the top shoulder seams of the garment. And again, I've just decided to use an overlocker for this and you can just use a zigzag stitch on a normal sewing machine. Okay, so now let's move on to the sleeves. All I'm doing for the sleeves is folding them over in half and then putting a seam down the outside as shown. And I've actually done that for both sleeves. Okay then, so what you now need to do is lay your garment inside out flat on the table, as you can see here, and then take one of your sleeves and turn it right ways out. Insert the sleeve to the inside of the armhole, making sure that the larger end of the sleeve will be attached to the armhole itself and the smaller end is the side that's on the inside. Now it's really important to make sure that you match up the bottom seam. So the seam of the sleeve and the bottom seam of the armhole itself. Once you've matched those seams up, make sure that it's nice and even all the way around the armhole. So what I like to do is 
put a pin right at the top of the sleeve and the armhole and then make sure that it's even right the way around. If you guys want to, you can put loads of pins in. I just know that because I've done this a lot and my patterns are correct, that my sleeve will actually fit perfectly into the armhole. And then once that's pinned, you're going to want to overlock or zigzag stitch all the way around that armhole until you come back to the place where you started. Now, as you can see, because we had the sleeve the right way out and the t-shirt inside out, when you open this out, the sleeve is actually attached in the right way. A lot of people do make this mistake, so just take your time with this. Now we're on to the neckband. And as you can see with mine, I've double overed my two inch neckband. So what you now see is one inch. Now I'm going to start at the back of the t-shirt. So grabbing my neckband and matching it up with the center back seam of the t-shirt with all raw edges together. I'm then going to attach the neckband all the way around the neckline of the t-shirt, leaving about a three inch gap around the back of the neck itself. Now the reason that I do this is because when you're attaching a neckband quite often different fabrics stretch at different rates and it's quite hard to make sure that you get a consistent neckband all the way around. Now if this step does seem really confusing to you guys I can do a completely separate video purely based on how to get the perfect neckband on. Take it over to your machine matching up at that centre back seam or just off and again I'm using an overlocker but you guys can use a zigzag stitch. So begin by just getting a couple of stitches in there so that they both are attached and then proceed by just stretching out the neckband and not the t-shirt. Now this is really important, you stretch out the neckband just a little bit more than the t-shirt as you're sewing or overlocking around the neckline itself. Now this is done so that it has a nice snug fitting neckband all the way around and it's nice and consistent right the way around the neckline. And as I said before, when you begin to come round towards the back of that neck again, just bring it out of the overlocker or the sewing machine. And you can then see this open gap that I've left where you should now attach your two ends of your neckband together at roughly or just a little bit less of the distance that's left in the neckline itself. Once you have done that, you can then purely stretch out and attach the last bit of the neckline. Once that's done, all I've then done is just snipped off the loose threads at the end and your t-shirt is nearly finished. Okay, now for this particular garment, because it's an oversized sort of style, I wanted to give it that complete raw edged feel. So I've decided not to hem this t-shirt. I will be doing that for other projects, but for this particular one, I've decided not to. Therefore, now what I need to do is just go over all the raw edges and just secure the overlock stitches into place. This is done just so that the overlocking thread doesn't unravel and the t-shirt doesn't start to undo. And then you just trim off the excess threads. Now this last step is completely up to you guys. You do not have to do it. So I like to put my own hem tags onto garments so it really does give it that individuality. Now once that's done, chuck on your oversized drop shoulder t-shirt and you should be good to go.